Now we're going to be talking about measuring and implementing the first two R's, reduce and reuse. Um, first, uh, it's really important to understand how important it is uh, to reduce first, uh, to design out waste, uh, recognize that waste is not inevitable. Uh, waste is an indication of inefficiency. Uh, someone did something wrong, someone screwed up. It's always been this way. The boss told it to do it. The state or federal government told you to do it. Uh, there's always some reason why this uh, was done, uh, to waste something, um, and it's never good for an organization. Uh, the average business um, um, is very inefficient. 90 to 95 percent of all the materials and products they buy are wasted, according to Gil Friend of uh, uh, Natural Logic which does sustainability analyses for businesses. Um, so there's a huge opportunity for being more efficient. That's why there's many programs called like Lean Manufacturing, Factor 4, Factor 10. Factor 4 says we can be four times more efficient. Factor 10 says we can be ten times more efficient. Uh, that's all because there's a lot of wastefulness. In the booming economy, that wasn't as important, but uh, since the downturn in the economy, um, businesses have increasingly seen they can't keep increasing their revenue, um, so they need to focus on decreasing their costs, and that's why zero waste is catching on, because everyone is seeing how they could uh, be more efficient and operate um, uh, at less cost uh, following zero waste practices. And what we've highlighted is that businesses save the most money by eliminating these inefficient practices. Uh, in their uh, purchasing, in their processes uh, for pro producing things, in their distribution, um, through things like backhaul systems. Um, RICO came up with the concept of refuse and return as a way to help communicate to their staff how to go about reducing uh, first, uh, saying that they refuse any material from a supplier or vendor that would become wasted by RICO, and if the vendor can't figure it out, they say, take it back, return to vendor, return to sender. Reuse is the next most important uh, piece of zero waste. Um, uh, saves tremendous amount of money through reusable shipping containers, returnable pallets. Toyota um, reports that they've saved over $40 million uh, through the reusable shipping containers. A deli in Telluride uh, had a payback of two weeks uh, for their implementing reusable shipping containers. Again, large or small, it's one of the uh, easy uh, things to look at for most businesses. Returnable pallets, similarly, and returning to vendors, um, putting clauses in um, purchase specifications uh, that they must take back the old product when they bring the new product. Um, Business is used to uh, supply chain management, uh, so this is just another piece of the supply chain management that most businesses are very comfortable practicing. In the Zero Waste International Alliance uh, website is the Zero Waste Business Principles, and in those principles number three, it highlights that if you are working to achieve the ZWIA definition of zero waste, of no burn, no bury, uh, that the measure of performance of success for that is getting to 90% diversion from landfills and incinerators. And this is the actual language from the zero waste business principles uh, that clarifies that. Um, when we look at how to measure reduce and reuse, uh, it's really important to realize that the, um, multiple measures are needed. Uh, Toyota highlights re most businesses will recycle some, then recycle more, then recycle less. And they recycle less because the, um, as they reduce and reuse, they decrease the calculation of a recycling diversion rate. Uh, but it's preferable for them to do reduce and reuse, and that's why we say that um, the 90% diversion number is an important metric and a very powerful one, but it shouldn't be the only one 
that is considered. Um, reducing uh, wasting and reuse systems are also really important to track. Uh, in the new U.S. Zero Waste Business Council uh, certification program, they're developing a point system like the LEED program of the U.S. Green Building Council point system so that uh, points will be awarded more for reducing and reusing than for recycling and um, uh, will contribute to higher levels of performance. Uh, so that will be a, a key uh, way in the future that we'll be able to do this um, uh, more appropriately. Uh, the new lead uh, recycling uh, guidelines for C and D have now included extra bonus points for reuse of products, particularly re adaptive reuse of buildings and then bringing in products that are uh, scavenged or salvaged from other buildings, reused products used in uh, the new construction or remodeling. Uh, so that's the direction we're talking about. More bonus points for reduce and reuse than for recycling uh, will be a key tool in a new point system that the Zero Waste Business Council is developing. We're also looking at the value, not just the tons. It's not just about the uh, number of tons diverted, but the value of those materials. Reusables are much more valuable than uh, recyclables re uh, because you want to retain the value using it for its original form and function. And um, an old door, for example, um, could be bought at a used building materials store for usually $20, $25 for a solid wood door. If you chip that up for mulch, compost, or uh, burning it for energy, it'd be worth about 25 to 50 cents. Uh, so that's an indication of value uh, of the product, all the embedded energy, all the, um, the value of the design, getting that product to market, using it, getting it back into a reuse store. There's a lot involved with that. That value is retained in the price of that product, and that needs to be counted in the future um, the systems that are being developed. Um, other measurement issues are looking at per capita for communities, per product for businesses, um, whether different things should count, such as dirty MRFs, um, in California, a new state law, AB 341, said if you send materials to a dirty MRF, which is a, a material recovery facility that takes mixed solid waste that the business or community has not sorted uh, themselves, uh, and they sort at a, in a sort line, that dirty MRF will only count towards the new state mandate in California if it accomplishes the same level of diversion as a source separation system. Um, that may be the type of standard that uh, will be incorporated into business certification programs in the future. Using uh, recyclables for alternative daily cover and other uh, things may not be uh, 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 allowed to count in the future. So what counts in the calculations? Does biomass count? Uh, do other things count? Is it for just non-hazardous waste? Uh, do you count C and D, that's uh, construction demolition materials that uh, come uh, only sporadically and not on a regular basis? Or how do you count that? These are some of the issues that are going to be uh, figured out as part of the development of new recognition and certification programs. Um, I also put on here the message that uh, after you've reduced, reused, recycled, composted, digested, redesigned, and you still have some things uh, that you haven't been able to figure out what to do, I suggest what would nature do? Uh, that's where natural systems like biomimicry and natural capitalism and uh, uh, ZERI, the Zero Emissions Research Initiative, are trying to, say, study how nature handles uh, a particular problem and replicate that um, 
And uh, to me, uh, the future is going to be bugs, you know, getting the right bugs to eat the right materials that um, they, as they do in nature um, uh, for uh, surviving. And a key tool for not only measuring progress, but evaluating the performance compared to others and uh, um, it's the impacts on climate change uh, is the WARM model at epa.gov. Uh, if you uh, search at epa.gov for uh, uh, waste, wasting and climate change, you'll get to the WARM model or just search directly for the WARM model. This is an interesting slide um, that is from a presentation from Chris Berger from the New York Sierra Club highlighting how his family uh, only put out, uh, only has accumulated one garbage bag full of uh, materials over 20 years. Um, and he uh, highlighted uh, how they did that and it was uh, using this basic message of engage your mind before your hand reaches out. And um, th this is really good idea of questions to ask for a community, for a business, an institution, uh, not just the individual, but it was a really interesting uh, set of questions. So before they buy a pro product in their family, they ask, do they really need it? Can they borrow it or rent it? Is it efficient? Is it made from recycled material or recyclable material that can be separated? And most importantly, do they have a way of properly handling it once it's accomplished its function? And do they have the ability to take responsibility for getting it to the right place? Is there a system set up for them to do that? And that's how they have uh, done this uh, wonderful job. We're hearing reports all over the world of zero waste families and individuals. Um, and this is one of the ways that that's accomplished. Another key tool for uh, businesses and communities is looking at the uh, uh, contracting uh, for services uh, and uh, um, how you contract for solid waste and recycling services uh, is a concept that EPA calls resource management contracting. If you go to wastewise at epa.gov, uh, there's all sorts of manuals and, and examples and models of what has happened, including General Motors. Um, and what they basically uh, said is um, they ha used to have a single garbage hauler and uh, other recycling haulers. Um, and what they did is they combined that into one contract and then said, okay, um, we want you to succeed if you recycle more and waste less and help us achieve that. And there's ways of structuring contracts as indicated here, sharing 50-50, performance bonuses, different ways of doing it. Uh, but restructuring the contractors, contracts uh, for the services provided uh, so that uh, both the service provider and the business uh, win by doing this. Uh, example, uh, in addition to General Motors, is Recology uh, in San Francisco was an early supporter of zero waste because prior to that uh, uh, adoption of zero waste by the city in 2001, um, the city staff had figured out how to provide incentives to Recology if they wasted less and recycled more. And once it was in their economic interest to do that, they then embraced and supported zero waste. And it's why zero, uh, San Francisco has gone on to be one of the world leaders in zero waste. So resource management contracting is a key tool for uh, getting the incentives right, for reducing, for setting up reuse systems, for uh, sharing the savings uh, with the different parties. The last couple of slides are uh, talking about how to measure uh, activities um, to get to zero waste. And the first step is a zero waste assessment, identifying the source amount, type, and value of the materials, and focusing on the highest amounts and the val highest value of materials, and which are most toxic. Uh, Michael Holes from the California Resource Management Training Institute developed this slide of 
nine generating sources in any business. It's a great checklist uh, for any business or institution to look at their operations, and you'll find that most of these sources of activity have different types of materials generated at any particular business. And um, by looking at this, each of these sources, you'll help identify where you can stop the wasting by redesigning the processes that are currently leading to materials going um, into landfill. Knowing the material types helps also define uh, what you uh, can accumulate from multiple places in your business, uh, knowing the discards. Uh, these are the 12 market categories developed by Urban Ore in the 1980s that define everything in the municipal solid waste stream. Uh, on this chart, polymers refer to plastics and tires. Ceramics refer to rocks like concrete and asphalt, things that break and are brittle and putrescible is referred to food scraps, um, things that putrefy. Then knowing the value of those materials is really important. This is uh, from a study done by Richard Anthony uh, for the state of Delaware. Uh, when he looked at the 12 market categories of all the materials disposed, a million tons per year in that state, he evaluated what the price per ton for each of those categories was multiplied that times the tons and came up with the total value that was being discarded. When people see that value, either for a full business or for a full community, uh, it really gets their attention, really highlights the opportunity by doing th things differently to recover that value and use that uh, resource more appropriately. The analysis can be done through walking through the facility, um, and this is a typical um, um, form that's used. Um, the uh, uh, getting an overview of the operations, what types of materials are generated, and looking at the different nine generation points we talked about. Um, this type of form uh, is available from EPA. If you go to WasteWise, you can find that. Another part of the commodities analysis is looking at purchasing records and trying to identify these opportunities for zero waste purchasing. The uh, information uh, uh, highlights opportunities to rethink, uh, do you really need to purchase that material? Can you buy less of it? Can you buy it in different ways that don't create waste uh, down the road? Um, and so purchasing is a huge opportunity for uh, reducing and, and setting up reuse systems, and those records will, will help inform where to uh, reduce and reuse. The partnership with suppliers, uh, RICO highlighted the refuse and return. We've talked about that before, but some examples at RICO of how they applied that was they, their chemicals that uh, came in small cans now come in 55-gallon drums. That reduced labor time for switching cans, cleaning leftover chemicals, it decreased water use, and decreased cost of packaging. Uh, individual cases were put into a master carton um, uh, previously with uh, uh, now no master carton after the zero waste approach, uh, reducing packaging cost, packaging time, and freight cost. Uh, so. Um, this is an example of what reducing um, <clears throat> accomplished at RICO um, that continues to save them every day. Uh, reuse, um, they, uh, uh, <clears throat> with paper cores, uh, save the paper uh, uh, and paper core uh, by reusing the paper and the core, and with empty cartridges, uh, use reusable parts. Uh, to come up with recycled cartridges. So again, these are examples of reusing parts to reduce cost and environmental impacts. And Rico underscores that recycling is the last thing to do. We say zero waste is beyond recycling, focusing first on reducing and reusing. Uh, this is an example um, of the cardboard box where it had styrofoam glued to the corrugated liner uh, to help in keeping things from moving around. Um, 
when they went through a zero waste analysis, uh, they said, well, how about we do that without a glue that would contaminate uh, that cardboard box from being recycled for its highest and best use. So what they did is they uh, put on snap-on types of uh, styrofoam. So it eliminated purchasing of glue, no drying time, made it much easier to separate the styrofoam from the liner to recycle, and no more use of a knife to cut the glue joint, which had OSHA and, and safety benefits to the employees. Uh, employees getting involved with this is a key way of getting to reduce and reuse. Um, these next couple of slides are from um, uh, RICO, uh, where they uh, require total participation of everyone, building a culture uh, that comes down from the CEO, but everyone's responsibility in the company includes getting to zero waste. They don't tolerate it. It's in the job descriptions. Uh, people have a choice to uh, either help or not. But they also have a reward system uh, and uh, are working to promote things everywhere. Um, uh, and they uh, uh, have uh, suggestion awards where people uh, get um, cash for uh, ideas on how to uh, do things better. Uh, they do make things fun. Um, have these contests. They call it the Plus Plus program, where um, if people have done well, uh, it's uh, given a plus. Um, if there's been a problem, they don't call it a problem, it's an opportunity for improvement, or Plus Plus. They also, um, this kite flying contest from uh, products uh, uh, discarded at their company uh, was an example of one of the things they did to just uh, make it fun uh, in educating people about uh, the opportunities uh, that they were looking to address. And they took away waste cans, uh, which is what a number of uh, zero waste businesses have done. Um, education um, uh, throughout uh, the company uh, and working with the community uh, is also part of that program.